In this video, we're going to learn how to prevent a race condition with a mutex using the POSIX thread library in C. We'll go over an example of a program that has a race condition, and then we'll fix it using a mutex. First off, what is a race condition? A race condition occurs when a program depends on the timing of one or more events to function correctly. And a race condition typically occurs when multiple threads access a shared variable or state at the same time. That's exactly what happens in our example. So our example code here simulates access to a bank account. We have this bank library with two functions, a function to read the account balance and a function write balance that's gonna set the account balance to a new balance. And the bank library is implemented like this. We initially set the balance to zero. The read balance function is gonna return the balance and the write balance function is gonna set the balance to the new balance that's provided. We also have these useleep function calls inside of read balance and write balance. And useleep is gonna pause the thread for a certain period of time. And the idea is that we're simulating the communication delay that will occur if say something like an ATM machine were communicating over a network with a central bank server. Now in our main function, we have two threads conduct a deposit using this deposit function. So the deposit function looks like this. It reads the account balance and stores it into a local account balance variable. We then increment that balance by a certain amount that's provided to the deposit function. We then write the new balance back to the balance variable in the bank library. So this account balance is gonna become the shared state between two threads of execution that causes a race condition to occur. So here we have the two threads being created in the main function and the two threads are both gonna conduct a deposit using that function. We'll print out the balance before and after we conduct the deposit. We create these pthread underscore t variables to manage each thread. We have two deposit amounts, 300 and 200. We create two threads, thread one and thread two, to run the deposit function. One with the deposit one amount and one with the deposit two amount. So we should have 500 in the bank account after this work is done. We join the threads and then we'll output that amount to see if it is 500. Let's see what happens though. So we'll compile the program and then we'll run it. And we're gonna find that we get before zero and after 200. So after deposits of 300 and 200, we would expect 500, but we got 200 as if only one deposit actually occurred. And what's going on here is the race condition issue. And the real problem is our deposit function. In our deposit function here, we're accessing the shared state balance. And the deposit function is running in two threads over the same period of time. As that's occurring, the statements in each deposit function's execution are going to interleave. When that occurs, the modification of the shared state, in this case, the account balance, may not occur in the way we intended. So to help us understand what's happening, let's go over a visualization of the race condition. So imagine we have thread one and thread two, both running the deposit function at the same time. We have thread one accessing the balance and then thread two accessing the balance. And they both set that local account balance variable of the function to zero. Then thread one and thread two are gonna increment that local account balance variable by the deposit amount. So 300 in the case of thread one, 200 in the case of thread two. Next, each thread writes its local balance back to the bank balance. So thread number one writes balance 300 back, and then thread number two writes balance 200. The problem is by the time thread number two goes to write its local account balance to the bank balance, its local balance is out of sync with the actual bank balance. For this to actually work, each thread needs to take turns accessing that bank balance. If one thread is modifying that bank balance while another thread is using it, that thread's gonna become out of sync with the actual account balance. This is where a mutex can come in. So a mutex is a synchronization primitive that enforces limits on access to a shared resource when we have multiple threads of execution. We can use a mutex to lock a critical section of code 
that accesses a shared resource. So that way only one thread of execution can enter the critical section of code at a time. By doing this, we can prevent racing conditions in our code and the associated bugs that come with them. So what we wanna do is make it so that only one thread can access this critical section of code at a time. What we're gonna do is lock it so that only one thread can actually execute these statements at a time. We can think of it as creating a lock here and then releasing the lock after we're done. So what's gonna happen is that the first thread that reaches this point in the code here, that thread is going to acquire the lock. At that point, any other threads that reach this point in the code are gonna pause here and wait until the lock has been released. Only then can another thread acquire the lock and begin to execute these statements. The thread that actually does have the lock is gonna run these statements, and when it's done, it's gonna release the lock. That's basically how mutex works. Let's implement one now using the POSIX library. So the first thing we'll have to do is make a mutex variable. It looks like this. You say pthread underscore mutex underscore t, and we'll call the variable itself mutex. We have to initialize the mutex variable using the pthread mutex init function. We'll do that here. We'll say pthread mutex init and mutex and null. So the first argument to initialize the mutex is going to be a pointer to our mutex variable. The second argument could provide some configuration options essentially to set up the mutex. If you provide null here as the argument, we'll get the default values, which is fine for our purposes. When we're done, we're going to destroy the mutex. So we'll say pthread mutex destroy, and we'll give a pointer to our mutex variable. Now we're going to lock and unlock this critical section of code. So to create the lock, we're going to say pthread mutex lock, and we give a pointer to your mutex. To release the lock, we're going to call the unlock function. So we'll say pthread mutex unlock, and again, a pointer to the mutex as the argument. And this actually should be it. If we save this and compile our program now, and then run it, we now get before zero and after 500, and it's working. So what's going on here is that again, the deposit function is running at the same time in two different threads. But now we're using this mutex lock. So what's gonna happen is one of the threads is gonna reach this statement first. That thread will acquire the lock. It's gonna run through these statements and then unlock. Now while that's happening, at some point the other thread is gonna reach this lock statement too. That thread is gonna wait here. It's just gonna pause and wait for the lock to be released. Now eventually the thread that first acquired the lock will finish executing these statements and then call the unlock function that's when this thread can acquire the lock and execute the statements itself. So we're gonna have code that executes like this. One thread is gonna get the lock. It's gonna run through those statements. It's gonna get the balance, update it, and then write it back. The other thread is gonna wait at that lock statement until that lock is eventually unlocked. When it is unlocked, that thread will get the lock. It's going to read the new balance, which is going to have been updated by that previous thread. Now it's working with the right balance. It'll update it, write it back, then it will release the lock. And that's it. So that's why it's working. So when we work with shared state across multiple threads, these critical sections of code 
that access and modify that state need to be considered. And one way to handle this problem is using a mutex to make it so that only one thread of execution can enter that critical section of code at a time. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.